We're going to take a look at a problem we're using the uh, limit definition of a function. Basically what we have is the general definition of the function here that we'll look at our example in a moment. Uh, just keeping in mind what it says is that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l if the following is true. If I pick any uh, error amount to the answer l that I choose, I can always find a, a little band delta around x so that when I evaluate the function in that band, my output gets me within epsilon of L itself. And so that's what this statement is trying to provide. So we're going to use an example to uh, say, okay, I'm going to give you an epsilon, so a general number bigger than zero. And I'm going to go through the process to try to figure out what that delta band has to be based on a given epsilon. So we want to take a look at this statement now. We want to find that value of delta such that for any epsilon bigger than zero, I have the following is true. It's really showing that the limit as x approaches one of this function, negative 3x squared plus x plus 4 is equal to 2, is true. So if we look at that function, we know it's a polynomial opening downwards. If I put in x equals to 1, I get that output as 2 for that function. So what I want to do is say, you know, I'm going to allow some error in my answer. That error is going to be that epsilon value. So here's 2. And here's going to be that epsilon value that allow for an error. So this would be 2 plus epsilon. And down here, 2 minus epsilon. And what we need to say is for any epsilon I pick, I need to be able to figure out down here what value of delta guarantees me that when I go 1 plus delta and 1 minus delta, that all of these answers, when I put into the function, brings me inside of that range. So we're going to start off with any of these types of problems when we need to prove it, is I'm going to be working with this inequality until I somehow get the absolute value of x minus 1 involved. It's kind of the, the real trick in the trade of these things. So I'm going to start with that statement. I've got the absolute value of this quantity, and when I simplify it, this becomes absolute value of negative 3x squared. Uh, plus x plus 2. And a little factoring, you could show that this factors down to the product. We have negative 3x minus 1 times x minus 1. Whoops, negative 3x minus 2 times the quantity x minus 1. Now, because I've got a product under the absolute value, I know I can use the absolute value rules to say that this is equivalent to the absolute value of negative 3x minus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. So I've got my absolute value of x minus 1. My problem is this guy. This piece right here, I need to somehow bound what's the maximum value that it can be equal to. And I'm just going to do one more thing to make it a little bit easier to deal with. Using absolute value rules, these two expressions are the same. The absolute value of uh, negative 1 times 3x plus 2, you pull out the negative 1, and it becomes the absolute value of 3x plus 2. So at this point, I'm going to say something about delta, is that I'm going to pick some upper limit that delta can be so that I can try to bound this guy. And so if we say, so kind of separate my work here, if uh, delta is at most 1, I know something about this expression itself. So if I say delta is at most 1, then the following is true. When I look at the absolute value of x minus 1, is it's at most 1, so this is going to be less than 1, or less or equal to 1. My inputs for this to be still true are the numbers from 0 to 2. So if I solve that inequality, I'm going to get 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. And so if that's what has to be true about x, what's the largest this expression could be on that region? And so when I look at the graph of the absolute value of 3x plus 2, when I graph this on the coordinate system, we have the picture of our absolute value function. It intersects at, or touches the x-axis at negative two-thirds and branches off. What I'm really curious about is what happens 
on this interval from 0 to 2, what's the largest this expression can be equal to? And so at 0, it's going to be at a height. So again, we're looking at this function, 3x plus 2. When x equals 0, it's going to be at a height of 2. And since it's increasing, as x goes from 0 to 2, the largest is going to be when we put 2 inside of here, we can now put of 8. So if delta is at most 1, what I can say is x has to be between 0 and 2. The largest this expression can be is 8. So the absolute value of 3x plus 2 must be less than or equal to 8 when delta is less than or equal to 1 for this statement. So when we're looking at absolute value of x minus 1 less than our delta. And so if I make that a strictly less than, this will have to be strictly less than 8. Now we know this statement right here, with the work that we did before, is going to be less than or equal to 8 times the absolute value of x minus 1 when we let delta be less than or equal to 1. Now however, if we look at this statement, 8 times the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon, this is only true if and only if the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 8. These two connected together allows me to, uh, a way to find delta now for any epsilon. Because I know if delta is less than or equal to 1, I'm going to be able to get to this part of the inequality. And if I allow uh, delta to be the smaller of these two numbers, 1 or epsilon over 8, I'll be able to string together the entire proof I needed so that if this statement's true, it proves this statement must be true itself. So I'm going to start off with looking at, okay, delta has to be the smaller of epsilon 8 over 1, and starting with that information, be able to show that this statement is also going to be true. So now we, now we, we did the background work, and we can say, okay, I give you an epsilon bigger than 0, so we say let epsilon be bigger than 0. Then my choice for delta is going to be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 8. So if this statement is true, if the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, I want to take a look and see if I can show that this has to be less than epsilon. So we're starting with that absolute value of negative 3x squared plus x plus 4 minus 2. We already shown that this is going to be the absolute value of uh, 3x plus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 with a little bit of factoring and simple, well, simplifying and then factoring. Now, this statement here, because I'm saying delta is the minimum of these two, this must strictly be less than 8 times the absolute value of x minus 1. And the reason for the strictly less than sign, because I'm saying the absolute value of x minus 1 had to be less than delta, and when that was true, we showed that the maximum this product, um, this factor here can be, is 8. And so, since that's the maximum value, 8 times that is going to be larger than this when we say delta has to be strictly less than 1 itself. Now, we said the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta is true, and if delta is smaller than 1, I'm sorry, if epsilon is smaller than 8, then this is going to be true. This has to be less than 8 times delta. Where we're getting this is that we've got 8 times the absolute value x minus 1, and we know this piece is true. And so if I look at the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, then this is also a true statement. I can multiply by a constant on both sides to say that has to be less than 8 times delta. Now if epsilon is larger than 8, then we're going to have something to worry about. So right now I'm going to say, okay, what, what happens when epsilon is less than 8? Then I'm guaranteed that delta equals to epsilon over 8, and this becomes 
8 times epsilon over 8 or equal to epsilon. And so I have my expression, the absolute value of this negative 3x squared plus x plus 4 minus 2 is strictly less than epsilon being true. So that's under the case if this was true. I'm able to go right here. If epsilon is bigger than 8 or larger than or equal to 8, then delta we said was going to equal to 1. And so that means this becomes 8 times 1. And so we have the absolute value of negative 3x squared plus x plus 4 minus 2. We said it's less than 8 times delta. So it's less than 8 times 1. Remember, epsilon here, large and equal to 8. We have this as strictly less than epsilon. Since epsilon could be larger than this one, which is less than or equal to epsilon itself. And so for what we, what we saw on this problem is that if we want to prove the general limit statement, is that we need to kind of work with the end piece that we need to have proven so that we can figure out what value delta we pick. So now I can come to any problem and say, here, here's kind of where the application is. I just told you how to choose delta. So we're going to show how it works in this example. Let's say So let, let, let's say we pick a value of epsilon to be 0.1. Now, once I kind of said I'm allowing the error of my answers to be within 0.1, what do I have to pick for my delta band? Again, looking at that function, I'm saying, okay, my, I know my answer is 2 at x equals to 1. We just kind of proved it. And now I'm going to allow my answers to have an error of uh, 0.1 above and below. So that would be at a maximum of 2.1 and a minimum here down at 1.9. Anything in here is possible. Tell me where on 1 am I allowed to take inputs from. So if I'm allowed to have an answer of 0.1, this just showed me how I can choose to value delta. Since uh, epsilon is 0.1, 0.1 over 8 we know is a smaller number than 1 itself. It tells me I'm going to pick delta to be 0.1 over 8. So we're going to choose delta to be 0.1 over 8 and that guarantees me that if I go over delta this 0.1 over 8 is 0 0.0125 if I go over delta to the right and delta to the left that would be at uh, 1.0125 and to the left that's going to be 0.9875 I'm guaranteed any value of x that I pick inside of this region will go to the function inside of this range. You may be able to make, pick a narrower band just looking at your calculator and finding okay, where those intersections occurs. We'll see that our interval here is much smaller. But this choice of delta now says give me any epsilon. This will always work. My answers within that delta band of 1 is going to be inside of that epsilon band of 2. So if I check that at 0.9875, put into our calculator for this function, remember it's this piece, this is f of x, we get an output of 2.062. That's less than 2.1, like we guaranteed, so we're within the epsilon band. And if I look at what happens at uh, 1.0125, I have an output from the function of roughly 1.937. Again, that's larger than 1.9, so I'm inside of that epsilon band. So when I think of that epsilon band, draw a little bit more to scale. Here's the 2.1, and here's my 1.9. says any output of that function is possible. And a delta I found, so this is my 1 minus delta, and this is the 1 plus delta when I look inside, those are all the value of x's outputs guaranteed inside of the epsilon band from that proof.